in the darkest corners of this world and the next. There's a man who's made a deal with the devil, and he's here to collect. Meet the sorcerer who smokes out demons and snogs with danger. Today, we are talking about Hell's Own, John Constantine. Be vigilant day and night. Nerdlings, and welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Danny Sonsisi, licensed cosmetologist and registered super nerd. And this little show right here that you've inexplicably stumbled upon is Comics and Cosmetics, the show where I spill all the juicy deets and deleted tweets on your favorite costume characters while doing my face at the same time. Well, you nerds, watch. Are we, are we done? If you're new, welcome. I sure hope that you will do us all a favor and sacrifice that like button to the algorithm overlords and make sure you hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you get notified whenever I'm back with another one of these videos. If you would like to support the channel, God bless ya. Thank ya. All you gotta do is check out the links in the description below. You can check out our little QR code we have right here. It will take you to buymeacoffee.com slash comics and MUA. And you can tip me as little or as much as you like. You can also join our Patreon. There are three different tiers starting at only $3 a month. And that first week, totally free. You get behind the scenes, outtakes, bloopers, you get sneak peeks, merch. You get merch every three months. It's a pretty sweet deal. And on top of that, we also have our own merch store where you have 36 designs exclusive to comics and cosmetics to choose from. Now that the bills are paid, let's dive in to this week's topic. As I told you from the future, this week we are talking about DC's complex and complicated character, John Constantine. So John Constantine was created by the always controversial Alan Moore, artist Stephen R. Bissett, and cover artist John Tottleman. He first appeared in the saga of Swamp Thing, number 37 in 19. 85. John is a British occult detective, sometimes con artist, and what the kids say these days is an anti-hero. Now old John often finds himself dealing with supernatural threats, demons, and otherworldly foes. John's childhood was far from ordinary. He was born into a tragic cursed existence, actually, due to an incident that occurred before he was born. One of the reasons his soul was damned before he was born, because he was foreseen to be this great sorcerer with the potential to be a powerful force in the battle between heaven and hell. The tragedy actually began when his mother tried to abort him. Yeah, you heard me. Tried to abort him. And he survived that 
abortion attempt. If you can imagine having the knowledge that your mother tried to abort you and you survived, like you have to live with that. Your mother tried to kill you before you were born. It's just sad. But he survives. However, she does not. When she gives birth to him, she dies. And poor John is left to be raised by his very abusive father. This tragic beginning to his life set the stage for him for the tumultuous life he was about to have. Wasn't pretty, folks. And because the Constantine comics got their start on DC's more adult label, Vertigo, it gets pretty dark. Yeah, it starts off with a botched abortion, but it gets dark. That wasn't the dark part. So his abusive father, Thomas, blamed John for the death of his mother, Marianne, called him killer, frequently remind him of how he came into this world. His early years were filled with trauma, fear, and an overwhelming sense of guilt. It was during this time that he actually started to exhibit some extraordinary abilities. He was attracting the attention of malevolent supernatural entities. His experiences in childhood would haunt him for the rest of his life, contributing much to his very jaded and cynical outlook. The curse on his soul was further exacerbated by these early traumas, setting the stage for the complex and troubled character we know as John Constantine, the Hellblazer. But the core of John's origin story really takes place in his early 20s, around the time he was 23 years old, around an incident known as the Newcastle Incident. It's not just a beer, folks. John Conjob Constantine was the front man for a punk band, which I can totally get behind. Notice some of my tattoos. But he was part of a punk rock occult group known as Mucus Membrane. Should have just called it Nostril. But like Nostril or Nostrils. Okay, because there are two of them. And you have two Nostrils for a reason. Looking at you, off-screen producer Amy Ratcliffe. It's just for you, babies. Starfish kisser. I'm sorry, professional professional starfish kisser. This band, Mucus Membrane, dabbled, if you will, in the dark arts. The other members of this group consisted of Gary Gaz Lester, Bino, the drummer, Les, Chaz Chandler, the roadie, and BFF. The band was active between the years of 1977 and 1979. Constantine formed the band after watching the Sex Pistols perform at the Roxy Club in London. Happened a lot back then. Trust me on that one. Alex Logue was also somewhat a part of this group. He owned a place called the Casanova Club, and he considered himself a bit of a master of the dark arts as well, and was kind of a mentor to John. But Alex is not a good person by any stretch of the imagination. And I mean that. He was absolutely horrendous. He had a daughter about 11 years old and her name was Astra. Sometimes in certain media it will come up as Astrid, but in the comic it was Astra. Mucus Membrane, remember John's band, mm. frequently hung out and played at the Casanova Club. But this club was basically a third-rate sex and drugs hang. And Alex, the owner and John's somewhat mentor, wasn't really interested in much else. He had these drug-fueled, dark magic-fueled ritual orgies frequently. And the really, really messed up part is that he involved his daughter Astra in these orgies. I told you, dude was no good. However, unlike her father astra actually had some natural powerful magical abilities she was extremely talented magically speaking and during one of these seances that she was an unwilling participant in she actually was able to summon a demon 
known as Norful Thing. And when she did, Norful Thing came right in and slaughtered Alex and his entire crew. Another connection that John had to Alex was his relationship with his older daughter, Zed. Astra's sister. And when the demon is attacking and slaughtering people, John steps up with Astra's older sister and his lover, Zed, and the rest of the guys, and they attempt to summon another demon, a bigger, badder demon, to come in and stop the first demon that was slaughtering everyone. Unfortunately, it all goes horribly wrong and the demon that they invoke actually comes, but it takes Astra with him back to hell. It was pretty, pretty awful. This clearly further traumatizes John and actually sends him to convalescent home in asylum because it just, it broke him. It would haunt him for the rest of his life and lead him into his even deeper involvement into the occult. He wanted nothing more than to rescue Astra. During the end of the Critical Mass story arc, John is actually able to finally free Astra and every other child whose soul was trapped in hell. Astra thanks John, like she kisses him and thanks him and appreciate the help. Thank you. Was there a while? Then she and the other children go to heaven. So yay. John actually first learned about the occult and his first magical spells from his friend and Rhodey, Charles Chaz Chandler. They were life lifelong friends. They were childhood friends. They grew up together. They were very close. Over time, Constantine's knowledge and abilities grew exponentially because he had a natural gift as it was. It was all predetermined. And he became embroiled in various mystical conflicts and dark conspiracies. As he delved deeper into the occult, he began to build quite a reputation in the supernatural community. He frequently interacted with powerful beings, including demons, angels, and otherworldly entities. But these interactions, as most things do, had pretty dire consequences. Magic comes at a price, you know. These interactions, him knowing that they had dire consequences, reinforced his reputation as a pretty morally ambiguous person. He would do anything. Throughout his life, John experienced numerous tragedies. These included loss of loved ones and friends and partners and his miraculous survival of lung cancer from his you know, constant chain smoking. And this was in the Dangerous Habit story arc, which is one of the best ones he has. But it's a testament to his absolute tenacity and pretty decent knack for escaping the clutches of death. Constantine never wanted to be a hero and he never considered himself a hero. Quite the opposite, actually. Despite his selfish and morally ambiguous actions, he often found himself entangled in supernatural conflicts and is driven to help people and stop apocalyptic events, including confronting some pretty damn dark forces. His character really does embody this reluctant hero archetype of what must be done despite his own personal feelings. His origin story is this absolutely tragic ballad of dark magic, personal tragedy, and supernatural entanglements. His journey from troubled child growing up in Liverpool with his abusive father to notorious occult figure is characterized pretty well by his complex personality and constant struggle against malevolent forces. Over the years, his character has evolved to become one of the most intriguing characters in the DC lineup. His quick wit, cunning strategies, and unique ability to navigate the supernatural world has made him the go-to anytime anything sus or supernatural pops up for the Justice League. One of Constantine's 
defining characteristics is his complex, multifaceted personality. He's far from the typical do-gooder. Instead, he embodies that morally ambiguous, anti-heroic persona. He lives in the gray areas for heroes. You know, you don't find many of those in the DC universe. They're all pretty stark differences between right and wrong. Not with Constantine. Often he's making questionable decisions that causes other characters in the DC universe to wonder whose side he's really on. He's known for his sharp wit, cunning intellect, and propensity for very clever manipulation. He is a master of mind games and more often than not, he tends to outsmart his adversaries through his masterful wit and manipulation. His cynicism and world weariness and innate understanding of the darker side of human nature contribute to his very unconventional charm. He's a charismatic and enigmatic figure who is just as likely to attract loyal friends as he is very dangerous enemies. He's a bad boy and bad boys tend to attract death and things. John possesses an extraordinary ability to think on his feet and adapt suddenly to various situations. His intelligence and quick wit are his primary assets when confronting supernatural threats and adversaries. Constantine's sardonic humor is a defining characteristic. He uses humor, often dark and biting, as a coping mechanism. His witty one-liners and sarcastic humor create a stark contrast to the often dark and gritty situations he often finds himself in. In fact, his sense of humor becomes a trademark of his character. Constantine is always, always depicted as a world-weary character. Very cynical. His experiences in the supernatural world and in the world have left him very jaded and distrustful. He's usually a loner. He often carries the weight of his past mistakes around with him, including the price of his dealings with the dark forces. John is also very morally flexible. That's a polite way of putting it. And it adds a lot of depth to his character. He is not confined to the traditional roles of good and evil. He's more than willing to use very morally questionable means to achieve his ends, sometimes making very morally gray choices to achieve a greater good and prevent a greater evil. Basically, He's the guy you call when you have no other options. But he's also very charismatic and has the ability to draw people to him. Despite his moral ambiguity, he has a very magnetic charm. He can be both the charming friend and manipulative schemer, depending on the situation and what he needs. His ability to manipulate and influence others is a testament to his charisma. He is a very self-reliant individual. Like I said, mostly he's a loner. He doesn't like involving other people because of the things that have happened in the past, like with Astra. He relies on his own wit, his knowledge of the occult, his resourcefulness, rather than, like I said, involving in other innocent people. One thing that makes Constantine more relatable of a hero than the other heroes in the DC pantheon is his relatability. He has human flaws. Not a lot of DC heroes have human flaws. He is depicted as imperfect, deeply flawed character who grapples with his own inner demons, both literal and metaphorical. This humanity to him makes him a character that readers can empathize with. His character arc is about personal sacrifice. He often finds himself making painful choices and sacrifices for the greater good, even if those decisions hurt him. His adaptability, again, is a very vital trait. And with it, it helps him to navigate these very treacherous supernatural waters. He is a very skilled and proficient 
occultist and magician. He possesses an extensive knowledge of the arcane. His magical repertoire includes spells, rituals, and the use of symbols and artifacts. He's an expert in various mystical practices, including exorcism, demonology, and necromancy. He has a deep understanding of the supernatural realm, and it's his primary asset in confronting otherworldly threats. His vast mental repertoire of spells, rituals, and magical lore helps him combat supernatural forces, threats, and adversaries of all kinds. Constantine also has a unique ability of manipulating synchronicity waves. What are synchronicity waves? Well, I'm so glad you asked, because I'm going to tell you. Okay. These waves are also known as coincidence waves. They can be altered by his will. Yeah, he can will them to change. He can influence events seemingly by chance, allowing him to manipulate situations and outcomes to gain the advantage. Exorcism and banishment rituals are part of Constantine's magical repertoire. He can expel or banish demons, spirits, supernatural entities from possessed individuals or specific locations. This skill is crucial in his battle against the demonic forces. His expertise in demonology allows him to summon control and even make deals with demons which i really didn't recommend so don't try this at home please he often uses this knowledge to gain information make bargains or confront demonic adversaries and foes his familiarity with demons and their weaknesses gives him a significant advantage when it comes to bad guys of the more dark art variety he is very skilled in creating protection spells and warding spells. He can enchant objects or locations to safeguard against supernatural threats, intrusions, or attacks. These spells serve as very crucial defense measures against the forces of darkness. I don't know why I did that. He's also extremely fond and proficient in divination. Various techniques like scrying, using a crystal and a string or blood to find locations of missing people or even bad guys they're hunting. He also reads tarot cards, tea leaves, crystal ball. They are all vital parts of his magical toolkit. He uses divination to gain insights into the future, understand hidden truths, and navigate the complexities of the mystical world. Constantine's knowledge of Necromancy allows him to communicate with the dead and manipulate necrotic energies. Ugh. This skill proves valuable in his investigations and interaction with spirits and the deceased. Ritual magic also plays a significant role in Constantine's spellcasting toolkit. He can perform intricate rituals, achieve specific magical effects from summoning supernatural entities to banishing them. These rituals often require meticulous preparation and execution. He can harness and manipulate elemental forces as well well he has been shown using fire water air and earth-based magics the elemental control gives him a vast array of offensive and defensive magic that he can pull out of his pocket at any time he frequently uses sigils and symbols and runes in his magical practices these symbols inscribed to invoke or contain mystical powers he is very skilled and proficient in creating and interpreting these symbols to achieve various magical effects his magical abilities extend to making deals and bargains with powerful supernatural entities often to achieve his own objectives and he's pretty good at tricking them into him ending up getting the better end of the deal you gotta kind of admire him for that like he knows what he's doing in that department but these deals and bargains have very far-reaching consequences for constantine as a character and it makes him 
even more complex. His magical abilities are a very bright reflection of his very complex and complicated character. His expertise in the occult, combined with his cunning, resourcefulness, sardonic humor, self-reliance, makes him a very elusive and engaging character in the realm of comics and literature, period. These abilities allow him to navigate a world filled with supernatural threats, making him a very captivating character in the world of literature. One of his more popular books books and story arcs was Hellblazer, a long-running comic series originally introduced John Constantine known for its dark and mature themes, making it the cornerstone of DC's Vertigo imprint. In Hellblazer, Constantine navigates a world fraught with malevolent spirits, demonic forces, and supernatural phenomena. Constantine's transition into the main DC universe allowed him to interact with other iconic DC characters and heroes like Superman and Batman. It also led to his involvement with superhero teams like Justice League Dark and even Justice League International. In Hellblazer, Constantine's character is really developed. He's depicted as a chain smoking, trench coat wearing, very loose tie as well. Like what is even the point? It's not cinched. It's not holding anything, but he seems to like it trench coat wearing working class anti-hero with a very sharp wit and penchant for morally ambiguous actions. His character is shown to be extremely complex, morally flexible, often making tough decisions for the greater good, even if it involves sacrificing others. In Hellblazer, it delves pretty deep into his occult knowledge and his encounters with a wide array of supernatural entities. Mm -hmm. Readers are introduced into darker, more disturbing elements of magic and mysticism as Constantine peddles demons, ghosts, and otherworldly horrors. Mm -hmm. Hellblazer doesn't shy away from addressing real world issues either. The series often incorporates social and political commentary grounding Constantine's adventures in gritty urban settings. It tackles such themes as poverty, addiction, and the consequences of one's actions. His relationships with other characters are explored in depth. His interactions with friends, allies, and lovers are central to the series. Notably, characters like Chaz Chandler, Zed, and Kit Ryan play significant roles in his life. Hellblazer features some of the darkest and most psychologically intense storylines in the character's history. Arcs like Dangerous Habits, in which Constantine is diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, and Original Sins, which explores his very traumatic childhood, are particularly memorable. His very manipulative nature tends to shine through quite a lot in the Hellblazer book. He often outsmarts both supernatural beings and magicians, making him a true trickster of the occult world. The series doesn't shy away from showing Constantine's morally gray decisions. He might manipulate others or even use friends as pawns in his battles against the dark forces. It adds more layers to his character, but it also shows how very, very, very flawed this person is and not necessarily someone you should be looking up to or attracted to. Do you hear me, Danielle? What? I wasn't listening. Hellblazer has several critically acclaimed runs from notable writers like Jamie Delano, Garth Ennis, and many others. These runs have added layers to Constantine's character and have been celebrated for their storytelling and character development. Constantine has been involved in significant crossover events such as Swamp Thing by Alan Moore, which is considered classic, hard agree, as well as his interactions with other DC characters in the Injustice storyline. Let me tell you something, I cannot recommend that more. Love it check it out. Hellblazer has had a very lasting impact on the horror and supernatural genre within comics. Its mature themes and complex storytelling 
have influenced subsequent works in the genre. John Constantine has been brought to life by various actors in different adaptations. Actually, it's only been two, so it's just been two. He's been brought to life by two actors. And the first one was Keanu Reeves, who portrayed him in the 2005 movie Constantine. Now, the movie certainly took liberties with such things as Constantine's nationality and coloring. Okay. Um, but it was pretty decent overall. I have to say, Tilda Swinton in that. Ah, love her. He's also been played by matt ryan in the cw shows he had his own show that lasted one season and i think you can watch it now on cw seed but he's also been featured in various other arrowverse <laughs> shows whenever there was a supernatural anything popping up and it eventually led to him getting a recurring role on dc's legends of tomorrow matt ryan has also portrayed him in every single animated occurrence of Constantine, which leads to a huge fan base that he has calling for him to portray Constantine in all future incarnations, including major motion pictures. But I have heard that the Keanu movie is getting a sequel, maybe? Who knows? There's a lot of rumors and stuff that go along out there and none of my legit sources have told me that. So one of my favorite, favorite incarnations of the Constantine character showing up in media outside of comic books is the Justice League Dark and Justice League Dark Apocalypse War films, animated films. Really, really good. Like even Dave liked it. I'm not lying. Dave liked it. Highly, highly recommend Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. It is probably by far my favorite DC animated film. It is chef's kiss chef's kiss can't say enough good things about it no notes none whatsoever check it out now stop watching me go watch it he's also found his place in several video game appearances like most notably he appeared in the video game adaptation of the 2005 constantine film offering players a chance to immerse themselves in the supernatural investigations he also is a playable character in the injustice gods among us game also so much fun you Johanna Constantine made an appearance in the Sandman series on Netflix. Johanna has existed in the comics as one of John Constantine's ancestors and in an Elseworlds comic book, uh, but this was certainly one of the cases where they just switched it to a girl instead of a boy. I did, I did like Jenna Coleman's portrayal of Johanna, Joanna, whatever. I like the sound of Johanna better. Um, I love her. She's one of my favorite, favorite Doctor Who companions, but I do have to say I prefer John Constantine to Johanna. Beyond the Hellblazer series, John Constantine remains to be one of the most prominent figures in DC Comics. He's featured in various crossover events, miniseries, and reboots, adapting to the ever-changing comic book landscape. His character remains just as relevant and compelling as he has in his own books. His character, John Constantine, has left a supernatural mark on pop culture. His archetype has inspired numerous anti-heroes and supernatural investigators in comic books, television, and film. I really feel like Constantine was a huge, huge inspiration for the Supernatural series on the CW. I mean, even Cass dresses like him, so how can you deny that? You can't. His cynical attitude, profound magical abilities, and chain-smoking persona have made him an iconic figure in modern storytelling. John Constantine's journey beyond the comic book page has resulted in such a rich tapestry of interpretations, with Matt Ryan's portrayal playing a pivotal role in shaping the character's perception in the contemporary media landscape. His enigmatic, morally ambiguous persona continues to captivate audiences across various entertainment mediums. John Constantine has left an unforgettable mark 
on the comic book world. His unconventional blend of supernatural intrigue, questionable choices, and magnetic charm has earned him quite the dedicated following. He is undoubtedly one of the most unique and enduring characters, not only in the DC universe, but on comics as a whole. His Faustian deals with the demon Nargal to save the souls of others, including save his own life from the horrific and damning diagnosis of stage four lung cancer has made him a character that you never know what's going to happen when he shows up. Is he going to save the day? Or is he going to f*** off and go get drunk? You just, you don't know what's going to happen with him. For instance, the Dangerous Habits storyline. It's a deep exploration of John Constantine's character, delving into his vulnerability, his morally complex nature, and his willingness to do whatever it takes to survive. Constantine's confrontation with his own mortality humanizes him in a way that makes the character more relatable and multidimensional. The storyline is celebrated for its dark humor and its portrayal of the supernatural world and its philosophical themes. This arc is considered one of the high points of Hellblazer and its impact is still felt in the character's lore. It showcases the notion that Constantine is not just a trickster or a con man, but a deeply flawed and tragic figure whose story continues to captivate and enthrall readers. Dangerous Habits is a testament to the storytelling capabilities of both Ennis and Constantine as a character. John Constantine remains to be one of the most enduring and unique characters in the comic book world. His blend of the supernatural, morally gray decisions, and his very charismatic personality has made him an absolute fan favorite. His legacy is a testament to the enduring appeal of morally complex supernatural and anti-heroic characters. What does that say about us? Well, a lot. He continues to influence and inspire creators and audiences in various media, a testament to the depth and complexity of the character. I love Constantine. He is one of my favorite supernatural characters. I'm glad he was created. He's a bad boy with a chip on his shoulder. Women love a project. What can I say? But that is all I have for you nerds today on the character of John Constantine. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, 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 please make that sacrifice to our algorithm overlords and smash that like button. Make sure you're still subscribed and ring that notification bell so you get notified when I'm back. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out the links below. And remember, if you want to know what products I have used today, also check that down below. I have not only given you a list of everything I've used, but I've also provided links for each one. So you don't even have to search for them. Just click my affiliate link. We also have other ways you can support the channel. Those links are down below as well. You can find us not only here on YouTube, but on Rumble, Odyssey, Spotify, and iTunes. Look for us on all the socials now, including Blue Sky. But that's all I have for you nerds today. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you have a wizard weekend and I will see you in the next one. Stay nerdy, babies. Bye.